Hi everyone, and welcome to another video of the SAFI webinar series. In this video, we are going to have an overview of diaphragms. A diaphragm can be activated from the surface attributes. We use diaphragms to stabilize structures subjected to lateral loads. For example, wind or seismic loads. The diaphragm effect adds rigidity in the plane of the surface by the means of finite element plates of the type membrane. This type of plate provides axial stiffness, but no bending stiffness. To consider the surface diaphragm effect, the enabled diaphragm checkbox must be checked. It is also necessary to assign a plate section to the surface, which determines the materials and the thickness of the diaphragm. It is possible to consider the self-weight of the diaphragms as well. For example, for a steel deck to calculate the equivalent thickness, we use this equation. We need to provide the equivalent rigidity, which is G prime. Let's start our demo. In this example, we have a multi-story building. On the first and second floor, we have surface loads. To enable a diaphragm, we need to edit the attributes of the surface load. I'm going to select the surface load and use the command surface attributes. The second tab in the surface attributes dialog box is the diaphragm parameters. To enable the diaphragm, first we need to create a plate section. We click on this button, Plate and Shell Sections. In this dialog box, we specify the parameters of the section. There are four types of plate sections. Regular, steel deck, wood panels, and diagonal lumbers. The first type of section is regular, which is used when we have elastic isotropic material. For this type of plate, a valid material must be selected. The second type is a steel deck, elastic material acting in membrane only. For this type of plate, a valid material must be selected as well. In addition to that, the user must specify the shear stiffness G prime or BV. This type of plate models the membrane behavior of wood panels. Although wood panels have an orthotropic behavior, they are modeled as isotropic material in the program. The required material properties must be specified directly in this field. For this type of plate, it is possible to select a standard wood panel, for example, polywood or OSB. The last type is diagonal lumbers, which is used to model the membrane behavior of diagonal lumbers. Although diagonal lumbers have an orthotropic behavior, they are also modeled as an isotropic material in the program. The user needs to specify the material properties directly in these fields. After defining the plate section, the user can select it from this menu and to activate the diaphragm, we need to check this box, Enable Diaphragm. The Consider Self-Weight option allows to consider the self-weight of the diaphragm using the section shape material and thickness in the analysis. When the diaphragm is activated, the program creates a finite element mesh in the plane of the surface. The plates used in this mesh have no bending stiffness, they only have membrane stiffness. These plate elements have an axial and shear stiffness called a diaphragm effect which transfers the force directly to the joints. In the case of a floor, these surfaces are surrounded by beams like we see in this picture. When a force flows in the floor, part of this force passes directly from one joint to the other through the plate elements of the diaphragm. The direct effect of this behavior is that the axial forces in the surrounding beams are lowered. This effect increases the increase of the diaphragm thickness. Depending on the real nature of the floor and the construction methods, it is possible that the diaphragm may be capable of transferring axial forces. For example, a steel deck floor. In this situation, the new option called Transfer Diaphragm Forces to the surrounding members for site surfaces should be activated. Now let's run the analysis, but first, we are going to disable the diaphragms. I'm going to select the two floors and edit the attributes of the surface. 
I'm going to deactivate the diaphragm from here. Now we can run the analysis. In this case, we see this warning that the displacement of joints is high. We click yes and we display the displacements. If we change the view to a top view and we click on this button, we will see that the structure is not stable. I'm going to change the scale and I'm going to use a 100 millimeter scale. I'm going to change the scale and I'm going to use a 100 millimeter scale. We can see that our structure is not stable. We notice that the horizontal deformation is also very high. Now let's activate the diaphragm and run the analysis again. I'm going to select the section and check this box, enable the diaphragm and we run the analysis again. This time, we can see that our structure is now stable along with the horizontal displacement. This is due to the additional rigidity in the plane considering the diaphragm was added to the model. Thank you for watching and catch you in another one of our webinar series videos.